So when you're starting off a project, first thing that has to happen is somebody has to hire you to do the project. So what does the owner or the client, what do they bring to the table when they start to hire you as an architect to pull together to do a project? The client has to bring a few things to the table in order for it to move forward. Uh, one of the things they bring you is the site. This is the way I talk about it, is that you have to kind of imagine that they have to hand you the site. So what does that mean? It means they have to give you a survey, a legal survey that describes the legal description uh, that is what the basis of all the design and all of the financing and everything will be based on. So that's done by a surveyor. It's not done by you. It's an important distinction. You have a site plan, you do other work that's similar to it, but a surveyor will do the survey, and that's something that is brought to the, to the project by the owner. Uh, the other thing that they'll bring to the project is any geotechnical information. So any soils reports, uh, anything about the landform that needs to be used uh, in the design, in the sort of design thinking, uh, all of those uh, issues about you know how high is the water table, all of that, that's part of the deal that the owner is supposed to bring because that's them bringing the site to you. Your job is to focus on the design intent. The way that you can focus on the design intent is by having all of that information sort of at your fingertips so the site is all right there. Another aspect of uh, this sort of bringing the site to the, to the project is the legal descriptions. Now that legal descriptions mostly revolve around the survey. The survey is one of those things that is essentially a legal description by itself. However, there are other aspects of legal descriptions that uh, the owner also has to, to inform you of. So that might be things like very specialized uh, jurisdictions, uh, there might be historic districts, things like that, that, that they should apprise you of. Uh, it also may have legal ramifications about uh, con contractual deals that have been struck with neighbors or easements or other things. Now those typically will also show up on the uh, survey, but there are certain types of easements that don't show up on a survey, they're more uh, contractual. The owner has to bring to the project and give to you so that you have a base to start with all of the site information. The other thing that the owner has to bring is the program. Now this is kind of an interesting one and architects feel very kind of two minds about this as an issue, but the way that the contracts are set up is that the owner brings the program, a finished program, to the architect as part of the signing the contract. Here's the contract, we we're both signing it. Here's the survey and here's the program. That the program then is how you've based all of your information in the contract in order to be able to write the contract. So how much is your fee? Well, it's gonna be based partly on what kind of project it is, which is based on the program. Uh, what are the budget expectations, which is gonna go into the contract? Well, that's gonna be about the program. The reason this is somewhat controversial for architects is that because we're all control freaks, uh, we all want to actually have control over the program, but uh, that's not part of the typical base contract that is expected in the AIA uh, contract. So typical AIA B101 contract will start after the program. And this makes perfect sense because it's the you need the program in order to write the contract. Uh, but, like I said, much of the design decision making is actually happening during the program. Uh, it's not where you're designing, you're not designing anything, but it's that sort of base set of decisions about the approach that's going to be taken for the project. Uh, and so that is a, a juicy uh, design element that most architects would love to get their hands on. So. Uh, Technically, in terms of how the exam works, uh, anytime you see the idea of program, that's part of the owner's world and that the owner should do that before the contract starts. If the architect is going to be doing the program, then it's considered an additional service and has to be written into the contract so that it uh, becomes part of the contract, but it's not part of the base contract. Often, if architects are going to be doing the programming, they'll, instead of doing it as an additional service on the architectural contract, they'll actually do it as a separate uh, kind of full-figured uh, like feasibility and programming uh, project. So it'll have its own contract, and then once that contract is done, then the new contract, the actual sort of normal building design contract, starts and you, you move into your regular project. Uh, but this is one of those things, like I said, that, that uh, architects have a hard time letting go, 
but it is technically part of the owner's project to bring to the project so that they have the ability to give you the site and what they want, which is the program. Uh, then obviously the third thing they have to do is be ready to actually make an agreement. So uh, be ready to sign the B101, uh, which is the AIA document. There are plenty of other versions of the documents. There are uh, other AIA versions. Um, there are other types of uh, project delivery, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute. Uh, but the, the baseline, the sort of base assumption is that they bring the information of the site and the program and they are ready to sign the contract uh, and then the project can move forward. So that's the owner-client responsibility.